In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build a web application using Streamlit and Scikit-Learn Python library. Particularly, we will be using the random forest regressor from the Scikit-Learn in order to build the machine learning model. And so this web application will allow you to adjust the data split ratio and also the hyperparameter such as the number of estimator, maximal feature, and all of the hyperparameters of the random forest. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is fire up your terminal. And then on my computer, I'll be activating my conda environment. Conda activate data professor. And so if you have a Conda environment installed on your computer, you could replace Data Professor here by the name of your own environment. I'll be going into the directory. And the directory is called ML app. And the contents of the ML app, let me show you. So let's fire up the application and we'll take a step-by-step -step walkthrough here. So I'm using the command streamlit run ml app dot py. All right, and so this is the machine learning app that we're going to be building today. And essentially, it will allow you to make predictions using the random forest regressor function from the scikit-learn library. And so we're going to be using the random forest algorithm. Okay, so let's have a look at the sidebar of this application. So you're going to be seeing here that there is a total of two major components here. The first component will be for you to upload your own CSV data. And so the data limit will be 200 megabytes. And then this is set by default from Stimlet. And in the second part here, you're going to be setting the parameters. And so this is the data split ratio. So it's going to be the percent for the training set. And here we're going to set it at default to be 80. And then you could adjust this value to your own liking. And upon adjusting, the model will be rebuilt. And then you're going to be having some learning parameters from the random forest model. And I will be covering this in just a moment as we go through the code. And then the general parameters as well, such as the seat number and also the performance measure of the model. And then once we're happy with those parameters, let's have a look at the app. So in the first component here, it will be showing the data set. And because no data set has been uploaded via the CSV, it will be showing this message called awaiting for CSV file to be uploaded. And so let's say that you want to use an example data set provided by the app here. You just click on press to use example data set. And then it's going to be using the Boston housing data set as an example for this regression model building. And so you're going to be seeing the first five lines of the data set of Boston housing. And after performing the data split using the 80-20 split ratio, which was the default value, you're going to have a training data set comprising of 506 rows, 13 columns. One column, 506 rows. And so the x variables will include these columns. And the y variable that we will be predicting is called the response. And in the next component here, in the section called model performance, we're going to have training set as 2.1. And then we're going to be displaying the coefficient of determination, R squared, also known as the goodness of fit, and also the performance from the test set. So this is for the 80% subset, and this is for the 20% subset. And here we're selecting the mean squared error. And then the model parameters will be provided here. So these learning parameters is provided in the side panel here. And okay, so here you can see that the performance measure, D 
default is MSE, and then you could change it to the MAE or the mean absolute error. And so probably I'll have to rename this section here. I just call it error. Let's do that. But let's do that in just a moment. And so let's take a look at the code now. So the first six lines of code will be importing the necessary functions. So here we're going to be making use of three Python libraries, including the Streamlit, Pandas, and Scikit-Learn. On line number 11, we're going to be setting the page dimension. And we're going to be calling the page title to be the machine learning app. And the page title will be right here. If we have a new, yeah. So we have to create a new tab. And then you're going to be seeing the page title right here, the machine learning app. So if we change it a bit, and then you're going to see that it's updated because we added the S here. Let's change it back. App. Okay. So notice that I've just clicked on the always rerun so that whenever I make the change, it will automatically be updated. And here the layout will be wide because if it's not wide, let's have a look. So you won't notice so much because if we expand the page, if it's not wide, it will occupy the center part. But if it's wide, then it'll occupy the entire window. Okay, so we'll just leave it at that. All right, so here we're going to be defining a custom function starting from line number 16 until 65 and the custom function will be essentially performing various components of the model building process. So it will start from taking the data frame of the input data and then it will be splitting that into a X variable and a Y variable. So essentially it will be selecting all column except for the last column as the X and then it will be selecting the Y column which is the last column as the Y variable. All right, and then these will be just essentially printing out the details of the data split for the training set and the test set. So right here. So upon clicking on the example data set, it will be running this build model function. Same thing, if you upload a data set here in the CSV, that will also trigger the running of the build model function. So we'll be seeing that in just a moment. So upon clicking on the use example data set, you're going to be seeing the data set here. And then the functions right here, printing out the data split details will be provided here in this code from 20 to 24. All right, so the training set and the test set, it's right here. Training set, test set, 1.3, variable details, X variable and Y variable, it's right here. X variable, Y variable. All right, and then let's move on. So this will perform the actual data split using the split ratio from the split size variable. And the split size variable will be shown below, right here, split size right here, which is from the side panel right here, data split ratio. So if we change this from 80 to other number, then other numbers will be assigned to the split size variable. Okay, so the great thing is that whatever value that you select here, it will be assigned to this variable, split size. And it will split the data into a training set and a subset according to your selection. And afterwards, we'll be initiating the random forest classifier. And so the parameters and estimator, the random state or the seed number, the maximum features to be used, the criterion, which is the mean squared error or the mean absolute error, minimum samples for the split, minimum samples for the leaf node, bootstrap, OOB score, and the number of jobs, which will allow you to perform parallel calculation, will be accessible from the side panel. So you could feel free to modify the parameters here and whatever value that you select here, will be reflected in the model building process. Okay, once you're happy with the parameters here, you will have already successfully initiated the RF 
model, and then you're going to be training the model by using the rf.fit, and then the input argument will be xtrain and ytrain. So it's going to be taking the xtrain and ytrain, or the training set, which is comprising of the 80% subset, and it will be building a model. And then subsequently, the model will be evaluated on the remaining 20% subset. So you're going to be seeing that in just a moment, right here. So it will be applied for predicting the training set and also predicting the test set. Okay, so the trained model, which was trained according to the 80% subset, will be used for predicting the same 80% subset and also on the 20% test set. And the results will be displayed in section 2.1 and 2.2, which is right here, 2.1 and 2.2. So the error, let me call this error, and then I'll say MSE or MAE. So it's depending on what you select. So this will make it more general. All right, so it says, Error, MSE or MAE, depending on your selection right here. If you select MSE, then it will be MSE. If not, you select MAE. And let's see. Okay, and so this will be the MAE, the mean absolute error. All right, and then line number 65 will be printing out the parameters used for the model building, which is displayed in here, section 3. So as you can see here, lines number 16 until lines number 65 will be the custom function to build the model. And we're going to be calling that build model. And the input argument will be the data frame. So if we upload the data set as a CSV file right here, then this will be the data frame that will be used as input. Or if we click on the example data set, then the Boston Housing data set, which comes from the scikit-learn data set module, will be used as the data frame. So we have two possible scenario, either your own data or the example data. All right, and so let's have a look further. Line number 68 until 75 is right here, the top portion of the web application. Lines number 79 until 100 is right here, the sidebar. Okay, so the first component, upload the data set here, is right here, line number 79 until 83. So we're going to be able to upload the file using the file uploader function. And here we specify that we're going to use it in the sidebar, st.sidebar. Okay, and so let's take a look further. So line number 86 and 87, this will be the data split ratio shown here. Number two, 2.1 is the learning parameters. So here we call it parameter, and estimator, parameter, max feature. So what we did here was just added the name parameter underscore to the name of the learning parameter, which was originally used by scikit-learn. So in scikit-learn, it is called n estimator. And so we just added parameters underscore right in front to distinguish that. And so here you're going to be able to set the four parameters in 2.1 and also the five parameters in 2.2, shown here. And then some of them is using the slider function, and some of them is using the select slider. So the slider function will essentially allow us to select continuous number from the range of zero to a thousand using the default 100, right here, 100 as the default, and then 100 is the step size as well. So the first number is the minimum value that you see right here, the minimum value. 1000 is the maximum value. The third value that you see here is the default value of 100. And then the next one or the last one here is the step size, meaning that if you slide it, it will add 100. So the step size will be 100. So if we change that to be 50, then when you slide it, it will be 100 and then 150, 200 and then 250. Okay, so we just leave it at 100. Okay, and for the select slider, it will work a little bit different. Select slider, it will essentially be a list of values. So it's not a continuous value slider. It will be a, a list of value that you could slide. You could select between auto, 
square root or log two. Okay. All right, let's have a look further in the main panel. Line number 106 will be printing out the name one data set. Right here, one data set. And so from lines number 108 until 134, we'll be using the if else. And so the first condition, if, if the file uploaded is not none, we will be printing out the data frame. And then we'll be printing out 1.1 glimpse of the data set. And so because we haven't yet uploaded the file, it will go to the else. And therefore it will be printing out awaiting for CSV file to be uploaded. However, if we uploaded the CSV file, it will go to the top portion here. It will run the top portion. But if we don't upload the CSV file, it will run the bottom portion. So let me show you. Let me upload the CSV file and then it will trigger the top portion and then the, the following use of the build model function. So I could just drag and drop into the box here. And then you see that 56 kilobytes is being uploaded. And then voila, automatically the model has been built. And you see here that it activates the 1.1 glimpse of the data set. So this is the data frame of the data set. And so here we're using the solubility data set. 1.2 is the dimension of the training and test set, the variable details, and then the model performance for the training set and the test set. So you can see here that both of them are using the built model function to perform the necessary data processing and model building process. And then the results will be printed out directly on the web app. And depending on whether we uploaded the CSV file or not, it will be deciding that based on the condition, if else conditional statement here. If you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet done so hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science and please enjoy the journey.